In this video, we're going to add some more detail to our Porsche 911 body. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to carry on creating our Porsche 911 style car. But there's a few more things that we need to add. So what we see on the screen, this is going to be essentially our end result. Now, after we did the body, I took a look at things and there are a few areas that I want to change. So we're going to talk about those. We're going to talk about what we need to do next and figure out the rest of the process. So you can go to the description of the video and you can download the data set that we um, had at the end of the last video or carry on with your own. And what we want to do is we want to look at the shape of the body, everything that we've created, and we want to make any last changes before we start adding any detail. Now, Fusion 360 is good in the fact that we have a history or a timeline at the bottom, which means that anything we base off of this form body will essentially update. But the tricky part of this is whenever we exit the form and it converts it to a B-rep surface, what ends up happening is the faces and the divisions, all these different patches that get created, if these change or move around, then anything that we create downstream is likely to fail. So it's important that we are happy with the body as designed before we start adding any of those details. So what I want to do is I want to edit this form and I want to talk about the canvas and a couple areas that I need to adjust. So first, after looking at the back of the car, I think I want to create a bumper. I want to finish this off in more of a traditional style and I don't want to leave it open. I played around with it a little bit and I just wasn't quite happy with it. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up creating the rear bumper. And another area that we need to fix or adjust is going to be this front section. It's a little too low and I think I want to bring it up higher. So we're going to have to make some adjustments there. And the last thing that we want to fix is going to be the roof. Now the roof on this car is way too rounded. Now, when we look at the blueprint, you can see the windscreen line is right here, and you can see that we're well above it in the center, but well below it in the corner. So these are all things that we need to fix, and they're going to take a little time, and we want to make sure that we, we correct this stuff before we get into actually going down the path of adding windows and adding extra detail, like, like seams and body lines. So the first thing I'm going to fix is the front, and I'm going to do this by going to box display mode, and I want to bring this geometry up. So I'm going to box select these edges. I'm going to go into edit form and I'm going to pull this up. Now this is going to cause some problems in other areas, but we're going to fix that. The next thing that I want to do is I want to bring uh, some of these edges up. And I'm going to do that by actually inserting some additional edges. So I'm not going to worry too much about the position of this edge. I'm going to leave it where it is and I'm going to insert another edge. But before I get too carried away, I need to fix some of these other edges. Now, this can be kind of hard to see. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that G endo surface that I created. And actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and delete it because we don't need it. And the next thing I want to do is I want to fix the problem I created with the hood. So if I hide the canvases, you can see that we raised this edge up. But now the rest of these are sort of dipped down. Now, the best way that we can fix this is by going back into our section analysis and actually be able to look through the model. So this is gonna help us see what we need to see. So right now we raise this edge up, but the rest of this needs to come up, at least the middle three edges. So you can see that I wanna raise this one, this one, and this one at the very least, and this front edge here. And the front edge is gonna be tricky because of the headlight itself, because we need to leave that where it is. So I'm gonna start with that one. We're gonna bring this up. And what we're looking for again is a gradual transition. So if I double click that edge, you can see that it ends right there. That's okay. And we're going to bring this up. And this might be okay, but I think I wanna bring this one up as well. And you can see when I double click, it actually selects the entire loop. That's not what I want. I only wanna to go to here. So I'm gonna hold down shift and double click here, go to my side view, and then bring that up as well. So let's go back to a smooth display, Alt and 3, make sure that looks okay. Make sure that we haven't created any problems. You can see there looks like there might be a little bit of a dip here. So let's go ahead and just make a few more adjustments. Probably want to take this edge and, and actually bring it down. Again, we're making a concept. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we just want to get it kind of close. 
So once we have that, again, back in smooth display, make sure that it looks okay. And I'm pretty happy with that. There might be a little bit of a dip here. You can continue to work on it, but before I go too much further, I'm gonna try that make uniform, go back and forth between box and smooth display. And now we wanna add that extra little detail here. Now, keep in mind when I'm doing this, you don't have to follow along exactly with what I'm doing. If you're happy with the shape here, then by all means, keep it. For, for my version of this car, I'm gonna add an extra edge and simply because I feel like it looks better with the taller bumper, the taller front end. So I'm gonna add it in here. It is going to affect our wheel arch, so we always wanna make sure that if there's any negative or drastic effects that we do sort of tweak and move those around. And then I wanna take this edge here, not the whole thing, but probably up to this point here, and I'm gonna move it forward. Now, remember, I'm not looking really to make a crease here. I'm just looking to round out that front. You can bring your canvases back if you wanna get more in line with the original. If you wanna bring this up and out, you certainly can. Uh, I'm just gonna kinda round this off. And one of the things that happens when you're creating these cars is they're likely not going to be the same no matter how many times you do it. You're gonna have some slight variations and you just need to be happy with what you create. So that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the shape. So now I wanna move on to fixing the top of the car. Now this is going to be very tricky for us. The top of the car is tricky simply because we don't wanna move everything. We only wanna move some sections. And you can see that there's a spoiler in here. I'm gonna hide the arrow, I'm gonna hide the tail light, and I'm gonna hide the spoiler. I don't need to see any of those things right now. If you see a ghosted image in there, it's because they were converted to a B rep and then we came back into the form. The only way for us to really hide those is to hide the body before we edit the form, but they're fine right now. So the center of the roof could potentially come down a little bit. And we can say that because when we look at this in smooth display, if we bring our canvases, you can see here it, it matches. When we look at it from the front view, it looks like it's a little bit high. It really needs to be more flat. So what that means is we can either bring the sides up or we can bring the center down. It really just depends on the car that you're making and what you're looking to do. So what I would like to do is I'm gonna take this edge here and I'm gonna shift double click here and then I wanna bring this down. I'm gonna do this looking at it from the front view. And remember we are in box display. So I'm gonna bring that down, let's say 10 millimeters, it's probably fine. And zoom out again. I don't really need to see the canvases. And I'm gonna take the next one down. Again, we wanna be mindful of how far back we're going. We don't want to change the entire thing. We could use a set pivot point and we could try to rotate it from this back. But again, I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna do some manual adjustments. And before I came to, I believe about here. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring those down as well. And remember, we're looking to get it to be more flat. So we don't wanna go down the same amount with everything. We're gonna go down gradually. I'm probably am gonna have to raise some of these up so this is gonna be tricky and I'm gonna take this edge and I'm gonna shift double click here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the corner of the A pillar. I'm gonna click here and shift double click here. And then from the front view, I'm not gonna to worry too much about going straight up since everything's at an angle. And I'm gonna pull that up. Now you'll notice one thing that happened is this didn't come with it. So I'm gonna hit control Z and I wanna make sure that I do bring this as well, so hold down shift, and this always seems to be in the way. Shift double click here. And we also wanna bring this, it'll automatically come with these two vertical edges, but just in case, let's make sure that we grab it. And then let's bring this up. Up and over, and now we've effectively flattened the roof out of it. So again, not perfect yet, but you can see that we have flattened, uh, flattened that roof out. Now I found when the roof was a little bit more rounded, just visually it didn't look right. So I wanted to flatten that out. And now we're gonna to have to make some additional adjustments. You can see that the rest of the body is going to need some tweaks. I'm gonna just go ahead and make some adjustments. I'm gonna take these three, pull them up. 
I'm only moving vertically. I'm moving them in plane essentially, but because these edges are sort of drifting off, I'm not too concerned with it. And I'm going to pull these up as well, just a little bit. And I might take these as well. Because that box selection doesn't work on vertices, I am going to have to shift select that vertex to make sure that I am bringing the back of this edge up with it. And that looks, that looks pretty good. I could probably do a little bit more work in here. I think this edge could come down. And the reason I say that is because if we look at the distance between this edge and this edge in the surrounding areas, this one seemed to be a bit further away. So I'm just gonna make some, some minor tweaks there. And when we look at this from the back, the midline looks okay, but this stuff seems to trail off a bit more. So I think I want to make some, uh, some additional adjustments before we get too far. And again, these minor adjustments don't necessarily have to be made, but they could make or break sort of the, the visual symmetry of the design you're working on. So it's a, it's a good idea to try to correct some of this now if you're worried about it. So Alt-3, that looks pretty good. Remember that we are going to be cutting glass out of the back here. Uh, so we don't have to worry too much about it, but that does look pretty good. And the last thing that I want to fix on this before we move on is to create the bumper. Now, this is going to be tricky because if we look at this, we've added some really close edges here, and we're going to have to work on blending things together. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift click here and shift double click here. And then I'm going to extrude these down. So I'm going to hold down Alt. And I'm going to bring this down and forward a little bit. And what we're looking to do here is to go back and forth between smooth display and box display and make sure everything looks OK. I then visually want to take these edges and bring them in a little bit. And that's simply a product of, of how the rest of the fender is adjusted. Might want to do that with uh, these as well and just bring those in slightly. And again, it's just a visual thing. You want to make sure that the way that the, the wheel arch tapers in looks okay for your design. And then we're going to bring these in as well. So back in box display, I want to take this edge and this edge and just bring it in a little bit. So it looks like it's rolling under. Uh, if we want to restructure this, we can move this one manually or we can use insert point. At this stage in the game, I'm going to mostly do little manual tweaks rather than uh, retopologizing everything. Really depends on the design, but for the most part, that's what I'm going to do. And then from here, we have to really consider what we want. Uh, so from this stage, I'm going to go to the side. And I am going to be mindful of the number of divisions we have, but it's not really that critical. But I'm going to hold down Alt and begin to extrude this out. I'm going to scale it down vertically because I, I do want to sort of minimize its size. In the real car, I really want this to go straight back. So I am going to have to restructure some of this, which means that uh, this tiny little edge right here and this edge need to come down. Uh, this is an area where using insert point is probably a better option. So uh, that way we don't really mess up the shape. So we're going to go to insert point. We're going to come from here. I'm going to come down to this point and back. And then I'm going to double click on this edge and delete it. So that helps me sort of restructure that. And then I can come in here and I can select that little piece right there and this corner and I can bring those down a bit easier. So again, one of the problems that we run into is if we divide these little pieces up uh, with uh, too many subdivisions, then it begins to be problematic to adjust the shape. Now you can see here, I'm going to scale it vertically to try to get that to be a bit more flat. And then I'll probably box select this and move it down. And then maybe box select these and try to straighten them out relative to each other. 
to sort of flatten that shape. And again, always go back and forth between smooth and box display to make sure you haven't uh, drastically altered anything. And then we'll start extruding this again. So Alt, and I'm gonna pull this back to here and scale it. And then vertically, I'm gonna push it over to the center. And I wanna take this edge and start to pull it in whatever shape I want. Now you might be wondering why I just did a single edge like that is because I want to come back and divide it up. So we're going to merge those together using weld vertices. So the top ones together, the bottom ones together. And now that we have sort of where the bumper is going to end up, we can start dividing it up and reshaping it. So insert edge. I'm going to put one right in the middle, and then I'm going to start to reshape it. So from the top, we'll just simply pull it out where uh, roughly it needs to be. You can go into smooth display and take a look. And with it still selected, I'm gonna go to insert edge. I'm gonna use both to put one on each side. And then I can begin moving those around. So again, we're gonna sort of pull this out to try to get the shape that we want. And once you start to add more divisions, you can start to figure out where they need to go in order to get the shape that you're looking for. So you can see that looks pretty good relative to the rest of the car, but it does need to be adjusted from the side. So when we look at it from the side, visually, these edges don't have a nice flow. So visually, I want to make some adjustments. And I think this entire bottom edge actually should probably come down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift double click from one end to the other. I'm going to start to scale them vertically and bring it down so that this point is roughly where I had it originally to sort of get that bumper to go straight back. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here, shift double click, but this time I'm gonna set my pivot point to this corner and then scale them vertically so it moves relative to that edge. Now it's, it's not gonna be perfect, but it is gonna give us a little bit better shape. If I go into smooth display, it looks pretty good. Box display looks okay. That vertex likely needs to come down a little bit. You can see that it's a bit high. And also, if we want it to have a little bit more shape, if we want it to sort of roll under, then we need to bring these bottom edges underneath. And we can do that by just bringing them back a little bit. And once you get to the edges that are on the side, you'll also need to bring them inward a little bit. So if you want to maintain that roll. All right, so that's looking, that's looking okay. It's looking pretty good. And again, double check your smooth display, make sure that the shape is what you want. And then we can begin to sort of fill out the rest of it. So what I'm going to do is shift double click there. And I'm going to bring this back. So alt, and I'm going to extrude it backwards from the top or from this uh, direction, we wanna make sure that we scale it. So again, we're gonna sort of flatten it and we're gonna end up connecting it back over here. But we also need to be mindful that some of this geometry needs to come forward as well. So go ahead and rotate your view a little bit, scale it inward. And then we want to zoom in and we wanna select both of these. And from the side, hold down Alt, extrude it forward to place it roughly in line with that vertice there. And then we're going to move it inward. This is going to be actually fairly critical. So make sure that you take the time because you don't want the distance between these two edges to vary. So we need to make sure that they're relatively close or relatively um, similar to what they were before. And then we're going to merge these two together, just connect them. And I'm going to probably leave a triangle here. So I'm going to connect those two. I'm going to allow it to fill that hole. And then I want to go to the midpoint here. I'm going to select these three edges. We're going to insert a single edge, make sure that it's not both. And we're going to just put it in about the correct spot, visually similar to what this one is here. 
And then we can use insert point to just connect those last two. So that should fill in the bumper shape here. If we take a look at it in smooth display, we should see a fairly consistent rolled edge there. Uh, again, depending on what you want it to look like. So you can see in this car, I've got a, a little bit of a lip there. Uh, and that's kind of the look that I'm going for. And that's also going to be where I put a seam. So that's kind of the, the shape I want. Now, when I look at this one here, it looks a bit too exaggerated. But again, if, make sure that we do the put in the work. And what we can do is we can come back and we can just move all this in a little bit. And we shouldn't drastically change anything. It should still look okay. We might need to make some slight adjustments to some of these points, but for the most part, it looks okay. Um, this portion here, we could get away from this being a triangle fairly easily. So for example, if we come to insert point, we can uh, just go from here and just break up this edge right here and then delete this one. And then we turn it into a four-sided face. So that can be done relatively easily. We don't necessarily need a four-sided face there. A triangle works okay, but uh, just in case you want to, you can. The last thing that I want to do is I think I want to roll this bottom edge under, make some more final adjustments to the shape, and then I want to uh, sort of just allow it to have a little bit more shape. I don't want it to be perfectly vertical. Uh, a couple ways that we can do that, we can insert an edge and when we insert the edge, we can just simply adjust the shape or we can add more to the bottom. Again, it really depends on your design and how, uh, how you want to handle the arrow. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert an edge. So I'll just double click the bottom. I'll insert an edge about halfway. We want to make sure that visually we didn't drastically affect the wheel arch and that looks okay. So what I want to do is I am going to select here, shift, double click here. And I'm going to reset my pivot point. And I'm just going to scale this out a little bit. So that's going to give us a little bit of shape there. So it's not just flat. And that'll that'll sort of help with the look. Now, if you want to roll the geometry underneath. Uh, there are a couple ways that we could do this. We can simply connect one side to the other, or we can extrude some of it back. So for me, if I select that edge and just hold down Alt and start to extrude it back, I'm going to rotate this around. Again, we're going to use the scale option to sort of get it to be more flat. And what I'm looking to do is put it right about where that vertex is. I'm going to scale it inward just a little bit. And then I'm going to extrude it again one more time. Just say Alt. We don't have to take it all the way back, but just a little bit will help. And then from here, what we can do is we can extrude one more time. I'm going to hold down Alt and extrude something out. I'm not going to be real picky with where that part goes because we're going to use weld vertices and allow it to go to that final location here. And then I can just use fill hole to, to sort of fix that. So we'll select fill hole, do this one here. And again, we can retopologize this if we don't want to try there. But if we look at this in smooth display, again, that rolls under okay. We just need to sort of finish off the fender area. So it, it gets a little tricky when you have a fender flare like this. And you can see on this white version here, I didn't actually reconnect anything. I, I sort of left that open. It just kind of depends on, again, the shape that you want to work with. If you want this to roll inward, then you need to take a couple of these edges and you need to pull them in. So again, we can just go Alt, extrude those inward, and then we can weld the vertices. It's always good to try to do as little as possible and then check the results. You can see here that rolls under pretty nicely and we just have to sort of deal with the fender here. So again, doing as little as possible, not adding a ton of topology or a ton of edges and just kind of seeing what the shape wants to do. A lot of times you'll find that if you don't fight the geometry, it will work a whole lot better. So what I think I would like to do here is potentially just extrude this forward 
And then I'm going to use weld vertices. I'm going to stick this vertex to this one. And then I'm just going to allow fusion to, to fill this entire bottom area here. I'm going to just see if I can get it to fill. Rotate this around. And I'm going to, you see we have a maintain creased edges. I'm not going to check that, but notice that you, uh, you could if you wanted to keep it creased. But that, that rolling under doesn't look horrible. But I think we do need a crease in there somewhere. I think that um, that triangle shape is not working. So I'm going to delete that try. I'm going to come to insert point. I'm going to carry this geometry across. I'm going to leave a T point on the inside because it's a good place to hide it. And then I'm going to double check the shape and smooth display. And I think what I want to do is I want to crease this inside edge. So I'm going to give that a try, see what it looks like. Those three edges, modify, crease, and then just take a look at it in smooth display. Now, you might find that it doesn't work for whatever you're designing, but we can see here that it rolls under OK. And the, the crease actually works OK in this case. So I think I'm going to leave it with a crease. Sometimes, again, you have to just be careful with um, the shapes that you're working with. The last thing we need to sort of figure out is if the back shape is done. Now, again, you want to sort of work on this and, and get this all figured out before you move on to adding your final geometry. Because if you decide to come back and make all these little tweaks like we're doing after, uh, it's it's not going to work very well. It's it's going to cause problems because you're going to end up making semi drastic changes, and you're not going to be able to. Uh, you're going to have to redo a lot of your work. But this looks okay. I think I'm happy with those results. If I bring back the tail light panel, I want to make sure that um, it fits, and you can see that it it doesn't. So I want to make some adjustments to the tail light panel. So with that bottom edge selected, I'll bring back the body. And I just want to pull this forward a little bit. I'm going to double click on this edge, pull this one down and forward. And uh, we'll double click the top edge. And we'll just make sure that it's inside of the original car. So go ahead and pull that back a little bit. The bottom edge, you probably need to hide the main body. Bring it back and just get a shape that you're happy with. Then on this back edge, I'm just going to pull it back so that it goes completely inside of the car body. And that at least gives me a surface that I can work with for making a fake tail light. So I think I'm okay with that. We still get a little bit of a bumper. It's a little bit more aggressive looking than the original. Uh, sort of the, the last piece of this is to be happy with the spoiler. Now, originally when I did this, I I sort of said that I didn't want um, you know, sort of a big wing on the back, but it, honestly, it doesn't look right without it and having some additional arrow features. So for me, I think adding that big wing is, is going to be kind of important, more important than I thought. So I am going to create a wing, and what we're doing is we're just going to make something that's about the right size. I'm going to add symmetry along the length direction. And then I need to pull that into place. So I'm going to use the body selection. And I'll just put it about where it needs to go. I'm going to rotate it slightly. And if you want to use the original as a reference, you can bring back the canvas. And that will uh, help me put it in about the right spot. Then we're going to go back to the all type selection. I'm going to scale this down a little bit. It doesn't really need to be that wide. And then I want to start to figure out the shape. So maybe give it a little bit of shape. And this, this can be done as a surface. Uh, it could be done as a solid. It really just kind of depends on what you're, uh, what you're working with. For me, I want to get roughly the shape down. And once I'm happy with that shape, I'm going to thicken it. And when I thicken it, then I need to work on it as if it's a solid. So we're going to go down to thicken. I'm going to make it 10 millimeters thick. And if we look at this in box display and smooth display, it looks the same. And that's because we creased the edges. 
And I'm gonna have some end plates on this. These can be designed as solid bodies later in the uh, just sort of the normal design workspace. But you just kind of have to figure out if you want it to be smooth or not. If you don't want it to be creased, you can always go back and uncrease the edges just like you would uh, uncrease anything else. So you can double click those. We can leave them creased on the side and we can uncrease them here. And then we can make some adjustments, make the wing thicker on the back, for example. So we can um, pull this section down, make it a little bit thicker back there, pull that section up. And we can maybe pull this down a little bit and just get something that's sort of wing shaped. So once you have roughly the right shape, again, we'll, we'll take care of the end plates and we'll do that afterwards as solid bodies. But that looks okay. It gives us sort of a good idea of what we're working with. Uh, because I don't want that other piece, that other wing, I'm going to delete it. And then we have the topic of the arrow. So this arrow piece here, uh, it, obviously it needs to go down. And I'm going to go ahead and just select it as a body and decide about where it needs to go. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up using this to cut through the bumper. Uh, so that is going to be used as a surface after the fact. And what I'm looking to do is just cut some of those arrow features out of the bumper. You'll notice that these pieces don't actually intersect the bumper. So if I want to make any changes to those, I can. Again, we're going to go ahead, uh, go ahead and double click edges. I'm going to shift double click these. And I'm going to scale them away from each other to make them wider. I'm going to do the same thing down here. Scale them away from each other. And in smooth display, you can see how that looks. And then we can double click here. And if we want those features to come out of the bumper, again, we can sort of just play around with the shapes and, and move them up and have them as true arrow features. Again, this is all the, the, the little aspects that will sort of give your vehicle its uniqueness. So you can spend as much time as you want on these details and figure out what you want your shape to look like. But I think that looks okay probably going to leave that for now. And that is the final adjustments to the body. So if everything worked and we finished the form, we shouldn't get any errors. Sometimes you will note that you will get some errors if you've moved things around and vertices tend to cross over each other. Uh, everything looks okay here. If we take a look at the bodies, you can see that there's this G endo body, and that's simply because we deleted one body and it renamed another one. So I'm going to call this wing. Then we have our taillight panel. Uh, so you can see that worked out. It's inside of there. We can use it to sort of fake a taillight. And then we've got the main body, which is made up of 143 faces. We've got the arrow. We can rename this stuff if we want to. I'm going to call this one main body. And then we've got the wing. So we've got all the little pieces that we need. Since that took about 30 minutes for those final adjustments, I think that's a great place for us to stop. In the next video, we will get to actually creating the windshield, the side glass, and the back glass, so we understand how we can do that. There are several ways that we can do it. We can trim the body, we can create offsets, we can split faces, we can split bodies. Uh, there's just a couple different ways we can do it. I'm gonna show you the method that I use typically, and then you can kind of decide which one works best for you. But at this stage, make sure that you do save your work. And this is the part of the process where you, you don't want to skimp on time. You want to spend the time to make sure that the shape is exactly what you want. If the shape isn't right here and we go on and we add more details, it's only going to produce problems downstream. So if you notice the wheel arches are not quite as round as they should be or if the shape isn't quite right, now is the time for you to work on that to make sure that it's right. Otherwise, it'll be much harder to fix downstream. So at this point, if you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.